So I wanted to touch on vitamin D toxicity because uh, there's a bit of a fear of taking too much vitamin D when in fact, it might not be as scary as you might think. This document is by Mayo Clinic and uh, it's a great article. And it says this, vitamin D is not as toxic as was once thought, a historical and up-to-date perspective. So this is just a brief history on why some people are still to this day uh, a little bit scared about taking too much vitamin D. In the 40s, vitamin D was used for rheumatoid arthritis. But did you realize the amounts they were using were between 200,000 IUs to 300,000 IUs? I mean, an average person might take 600 IUs to 1,000 IUs, right? They're talking 200,000 to 300,000. And the reason this works is vitamin D really helps the immune system and it gets rid of inflammation. But then in the 50s, uh, they were actually fortifying uh, the dairy products and other products. But there's been some complaints from parents with children who had some side effects, calcification in the kidneys, and even some calcification on their heart valves. So the fortification of vitamin D in dairy was banned in Europe, uh, but not necessarily in America or Canada, or I think even in the UK. Now, years later, they found out exactly why these specific children had these problems. It was because they had a rare genetic disease called Williams syndrome, in which case you don't want to take vitamin D at all, or else you'll have calcification in the valves of the heart, as well as kidney stones. So if we take out this rare uh, genetic disease, there wasn't a lot of side effects, there was just a lot of benefits. So nowadays, when you look at vitamin D, it always says precaution, make sure you don't take too much. You could experience a toxic effect. Now that statement is in all the textbooks, it's on all the websites, so it's all over the place. So people are a bit nervous about that. But if you go through this article, it would take 50,000 to 100,000 IUs of vitamin D for months to years before vitamin D became toxic. Now, this is a lot more than what people even consider toxic. And when we say toxicity, we're talking about hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood, which could lead to kidney stones. However, there is very little evidence, if any evidence, that shows that taking vitamin D will lead to kidney stones at all. So if people end up taking smaller amounts, 1,000 to 2,000 I use per day for a period of time. Well, I did another video, which I will put a link down below, that shows that if you're deficient and you take 1,000 milligrams, it could take four months or longer before your deficiency is satisfied. To be able to put autoimmune conditions into remission, it does take large amounts for long periods of time. And on top of that, if you wanted to decrease the risk of any potential for this, really what you do is you actually drink 2.5 liters of fluid every single day and you avoid taking calcium as a supplement and you avoid dairy. And that will actually bring the risk for kidney stones way down. So you can then have the anti-inflammatory benefits for autoimmune conditions. And also realize that anything that I say in this video is not meant to replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before taking any of my advice. And before you go, check out this video on vitamin D dosage. I think you'll find it quite interesting.